Hi again everyone, Ken from Whittling Woods back again with the next part of our Whittlia chess set series. Today we're going to do the Rook and the Bishop. They're essentially the same carving as the uh, Pawn, so we're, I'm not going to really show you the, the carving of the bottom part. The only thing I'm really going to show, which I think is all you need to see, is the top. The Rook is going to have some crenellations in the top, and the Bishop will have a, a bit of a design in the, in the top. The measurements are pretty similar. I'll let you, I'll let you mark those uh, down. The, keep in mind, two and a quarter inches for the Rook. And you can see the other measurements there. And then the bishop, a little bit, uh, an eighth of an inch longer, two and three eighths inches, and you can see all the measurements here. The, the top is three eighths of an inch as opposed to a quarter inch. That's the only difference. The carving for the two will be exactly the same. And again, they're going to be um, the same as the pawn that we did not too long ago. Here's uh, a version of the pawn. So I would suggest that um, you, you go check out that video. Uh, it'll detail how we carved up to that part. Ba basically, both the bishop and the rook, the carving is going to be exactly the same. So I won't bore you with the details on that. Go check out the pawn video if you're interested in doing this. And um, and, and that should get you up to speed in, in that regard. I will go sharpen my knives, get these uh, pieces um, set up and ready to go. And uh, I'll be back when uh, when we're ready to show you um, some of the detail on both these pieces. Be right back. Okay, just thought I'd jump in here and, and point a couple things out that uh, may be important. When you're when you're um, doing the the sides of the piece, keep in mind that um, uh, it's a fairly long cut that we're making going up here, and if you're going against the grain, it'll very easily tear out. So my suggestion would be to take very shallow cuts, especially if you're going um, against the grain. You'll start to feel the uh, wood pull away from you, and it'll want to go deeper rather than staying on the, uh, the surface, and you potentially will expose grain and, and ruin your piece. Uh, if you're going along the side, I, I like to kind of take down the sides uh, the edges, excuse me, a little bit. Um, it makes you know a little less wood to remove when you're when you're going up um, the the main the main face of the piece. So on the edge, like I said, just just start small and get, get a feel. You'll you'll be if it's a if it's a side that's against the grain, it'll start to tear and, and just make your cuts very shallow. If if that is the case, like this, you see how the wood essentially is curling away. That's that's what you want to see. You don't want the wood to, to start to pull away in one flat piece. You kind of want to see those curls. That that uh, means you're you're you know it's a successful cut and it'll be nice and smooth, and um, the surface will be kind of glass-like. And that'll be consistent, uh, or excuse me, that'll be something you you, you aim towards when you're doing the uh, sides as well. So if you're doing um, a side like this, just just start you know start small. You don't have to. You don't have to do it all at once because it's maybe too much wood to remove. It's better to go back and and take little little pieces because what you're aiming for is a is a very smooth surface, and and you will achieve that. It'll it'll be very almost glass like, um, but it it will be more difficult on a side uh, that's where you're carving against against the grain. So you know keep that in mind. Take your time. Do very shallow cuts like that. Achieve, aim for those little curls of wood. That's that's what you're looking for, and um, you know practice on it. These are kind of skill building and practice pieces. And hopefully, when uh, when you do enough of these, uh, not only will you be better at whittling, but you also have a little chess set that you can use. All right, I just thought I wanted to I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to finish up uh, these pieces, get them both ready to go, and then we'll we'll show you the detail on the top. Be right back. Okay, just uh, jumping back in here again. Um, as you can see, I, I have the piece uh, pretty much um, ready to go. This is going to be the um, the rook, and just uh, another uh, side note: it's it helps if when you're doing this to when you're cleaning the surface up to get a nice smooth finish. Again, we're not using sandpaper or anything like that. We're using a knife to keep the surface nice and clean. We're just you basically lay your knife almost flat on the surface, and and then you're going to just Go across, and you'll it'll pick up any 
any inconsistencies, any any high spots, and you can you know you work your way down. And you wind up cleaning up the surface that way, and, and you'll get a very glass-like finish. You can spend as much time as you like doing that, and as you can see, I, I kind of did this already, so it's not really picking up a whole heck of a lot. Uh, it'll get a little bit here and there, and that's how you clean up your surface. You, you get it really smooth that way, and um, you know, for a piece of basswood, it's it's kind of it's kind of nice like that. So anyway, I just wanted to um, jump in uh, while we're doing that. I apologize for uh, jumping in again, but I'd be remiss if I didn't talk real quickly about uh, one of the most important parts is as you're doing these carvings, stop every so often and drop your knife. Uh, keep it nice and sharp. The key in all these carvings for your own safety, uh, for the quality of the, the cuts that you make and the ease of carving, uh, keep your knife strop. Get a leather strop. You can, like I did, I had a piece of maple here. I glued a couple pieces of leather too. I have some of this uh, white compound. I, it, whatever you have, the white compound, the yellow compound, it, it really doesn't matter. Throw some of that on the uh, strop. I try the white and the green just because I have them. No particular reason. Um, and just and just run your knife over it. It'll keep the nice the knife nice and sharp, and you will be able to get a very nice finish on your surface and that's really about it just just periodically do that um, do not continue to carve without stropping your knife it will it will eventually dull and I mean, basswood's not the hardest wood in the world so it, 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 it takes a long time for good knives like these North Bay Forge knives to to uh, to dull on basswood especially um, but regards to that you can never uh, strop you know too much some people ask, have asked me in the past, how, how you know how how much should I strop? It, just just strop. It does, don't you'll 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 be you'll uh, thank yourself for it in the long run that you've kept your nice nice and honed up. And uh, that's it. Just just do it periodically. Just get in the habit and uh, keep them keep them ready to go. Alrighty, be right back. Um, just one more thing I think that is important. Uh, again, uh, I'm not going to bore you with the details of the whittling part itself. I, you look up the palm video. I'll have the link you know, somewhere up in here and also down in the description. Look that up. That's basically the, the same design. So I, I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you with all the whittling parts. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm not really showing that. I don't think we, we need to repeat that. Uh, but a couple things I do want to point out. Uh, when you draw your guidelines, it is it is a key to get those. It's, it's kind of important to get those straight. If they're a little off here and there, it'll show up on the final carving. It, you're, since we're really dealing with planes here, it's very difficult to hide um, inconsistencies. In, in some respects, it's still a good thing because um, obviously these are hand done, so there's going to be a bit of inconsistencies. And they're not done in a machine, so you can't expect uh, perfect replicas. But that's what we like about whittling. We like the idea that, that things are hand carved and hand done. You can tell that when you look at them. But w with all that in mind, it still pays to, to try to be as precise as you can. So, you know, get yourself a, um, a, a little square that you can use and you can line up on the side of the piece and get your lines nice and straight. And then when you do put your knife in here, like take for instance, uh, this portion over here. I already did the the edges. Um, if you you can use your knife, you can use that line. I put it slightly above that line. Keep your keep it as straight on that. Hold it in front of you so you can see what you're doing. You don't want the knife coming in like this. You you want to get it straight on that line when you make these cuts because that's gonna that's gonna really show in your final piece. And then just you know push up. Keep it right at that line over there, as you can see. That, that's what you're going for. And again, the point of all these, whether it's, we're, we're tapering these sides. We're, we're, we're tapering them in just a bit um, uh, on, all, on all points. So all our, all our carvings are starting from, a, from a, uh, a, a linear perspective here, um, excuse me, a linear um, mark, and just going straight up, you know, with a slight, with a slight taper. That's, that's really all we're looking for. So when you're doing these, just keep that in mind. Get your knife straight on that line over there, so maybe slightly above it so it doesn't completely disappear. And then holding, holding it in, right in front of you, you're going to push it through.
And the same thing applies to keep it nice and smooth. So that's what we're after. We're after that, that taper. Alrighty, I just wanted to point that out when you're doing these carvings. I might not have uh, mentioned that specifically in the Palm Vita, but it's something uh, to keep in mind. Uh, this time I will finish the the uh, the bishop component uh, for for um, for the final uh, top finish, and uh, I'll meet you back when when that is done. Okay, as you can see, um, both pieces are essentially uh, ready to go, ready to put the detail that would uh, determine which one's the bishop and which one's the work. Uh, one thing I, I did want to real quick go over, when you're, when you're doing your taper, like on the base or up here, whatever the case may be, um, you have your guideline here. A lot of times what it, what it kind of helps us go you know, depending on which way you're going to be cutting. In this case, I'm going to be cutting up to it. So maybe I go right just slightly below it and I make my stop cut. And then I work my piece up, up to that. Um, kind of in that fashion. And the reason that I'm bringing this, um, I'm, I'm showing you this is because when you're cutting up here, you know, your knife's going to be banging into it. Um, and so this, this bottom edge may get a little, a little beat up. Uh, also keep in mind too, when you're going over a long distance like this, uh, be very careful as you get to the top. If you're pushing too hard and you're, and you know, your knife's slightly dull, you'll, you may slip and you'll go right through. And since we do have a lip here, you'll, you'll shave it right off and you'll ruin your piece. But in this case here, as you can see, I'm, I'm carving up to that piece. And try to maintain control, always maintain control of your, over your carving knife. But essentially, once you're done, you get, you get the taper to, the, to where you want it. Then you can come back and you put your knife on that line and you slice directly down. And if you do that a couple times to get it just so, you can clean up that, that bottom edge quite a bit. And it'll, it'll wind up be, being... Um, you know, quite a bit sharper for you, and it'll clean it up real nice. So, uh, just a you know, quick little tip to keep in mind when you're doing that. All right, what I'm going to do is um, um, draw some marks on here, and then I'll I'll be right back to show you how to do the tops. Okay, for the uh, top of the brook, we're going to put some uh, crenellations in, in the top, and um, all I did was uh, I I used my finger and I I made like a, a checkerboard pattern on here, criss you know, a little crisscross, and that's it. So what we what we're going to do is put our knife into the wood right at right at the mark, and we're going to just slice directly down uh, the end grain. Now you're dealing with end grain, so it's it's a little different than than cutting, um, you know, kind of a, a across across the grain. You're cutting down directly into it. So if you can imagine, all the fibers going this direction, you're slicing straight down. So it can break apart very easily. So you have to be very careful. Uh, when you do this, just take your time and take little small nibbles. And then we're going to go, after we put the, the slice in there, we're going to go from one side and kind of cut up to that, take a little piece out, and then to the other side. You can start small, I don't know if you can see that, um, and then work your way if you want to enlarge it. But then just go around and do that. Again, just put your knife in the wood straight down, and then nibble out on both sides until you get a little a little piece like that out of there. That's all. And we're just going to go around and do that um, for all eight little pieces. I won't bore you with the details on that. I'll finish these up and I will um, I'll be right back. That's it. They don't have to be very deep. Uh, again, it's just a detail to differentiate the piece. Uh, try to keep them as consistent as possible. And uh, really, that's it. Um, we we finished the uh, finished the uh, rook for the bishop. Um, the only thing we're going to do is uh, two things. We're going to kind of find the center of it. Um, I just kind of do this kind of deal to find the center of a piece. All right, so uh, approximately right there is the center. So we we know where that is. What we want to do is. Um, I usually go down. We went up uh, the. We extended this about an eighth of an inch. So if you come down about an eighth of an inch, and start making little cuts to taper that in, a 
like so. And you're going to go around and you're just going to make these what I would call swooping cuts because your knife is kind to, kind of going on a, in a slight curve like that. Uh, take your time. You're cutting across directly across the end grain and your knife has to be sharp if that's the case. And if you if you see it uh, leaving scratch marks on there, you know, hone it up. Make sure it's make sure it's good. And then uh, just keep um, keep that keep that going. You know, you're going to do kind of uh, all around. We're going to bring them in from all sides like this. And this is probably a detail that you you know don't necessarily have to add if you don't if you don't want to. I just I don't know. I, I kind of just like throwing a little. It's like a little nub on the top. Um, if you look at some bishops and chess pieces, they have this little um, nub on the top, and that's kind of what we're mimicking to some extent. And I just keep going around until, until I get it to a point pretty narrow. Again, this is very repetitive, just me going in here doing this, so um, I won't um, I give you the idea of how to do it. It's an option you can you can choose. What I'm going to do is get it to where I like it, and then I'll come back for the the last and, and final little uh, groove. We'll cut on the we'll cut into the top of the bishop. I'll be right back. Okay, um, I got it to kind of a point where I feel that's sufficient. Uh, again, you know, just uh, you know, continue doing that and cleaning up your edge. If you happen to have um, a smaller narrow knife you can you can use that as well that, that'll make uh, much finer cuts if you want to it works the next thing we're going to do is is cut a little notch out if you look at the pieces uh, the bishops tend to have this little notch out um, you know kind of diagonally into the wood so um, this is going to be a, a sort of a unique cut because we're going to be cutting partially into the end grain just kind of roll your knife along the edge like that start you know get it started and, and again be very careful with this cut because you know you're you are cutting end grain you don't want it to you don't want it to chip out you don't want it to break and you definitely don't want it to hit your your hand you'll learn real fast if you're not if your knife is is sharp um, not that I have any experience in that but anyway this this is all we're gonna do we're gonna we're gonna start kind of notching out a little groove and unfortunately, the bass what I happen to be using here is actually kind of old and a little bit. I, I have no idea where it's come. I think I bought it locally from a lumber yard, um, and it's you know probably not like a northern. I, I think some of the good basswood comes from uh, Wisconsin, um, northern northern states like that, um, and. Um, noticeably different. This is definitely a little bit harder and a little bit more fragile and you can even see that the coloration is a bit more tan in color. It's not as white. But that's if you kind of see what I'm what I'm doing here. I'm just I'm just notching in a little bit of a groove and um, that's it. It doesn't have to be anything too deep Again, we're just adding a detail that will differentiate this piece from the other pieces on the chessboard, and you'll know just by looking at it. Most people are viewing the chessboard from the top, so they'll see the little, little groove in here and, and know right away that it's uh, definitely a bishop. And I go down to about that, about the, uh, the, the plain line here, give or take. You know, and you can just work your way around and get that groove to to you know, the, the, the level you want. I don't necessarily think it has to be a hole overly deep or overly wide. Again, we're using a knife in here, so um, I think most of them in the chess pieces are probably cut out with some type of, uh, some type of saw or, or bit that cuts a very flat bottomed groove. We're not, we're not doing that with this. But anyway, I hope, I hope you can kind of see that. So um, there you go. We've pretty much finished our our um, our two pieces here, our rook and our bishop. What I'm going to do is uh, cut them apart, and um, I left a little bit of a, as you can see here, a little bit of a a, a kerf um, allowance for when I put my knife in there, and I'm just going to slice these pieces apart. And sometimes it helps to 
um, you know, get a bit of a groove started with your knife, you can kind of cut it. Um, if you're doing if you're doing it like I'm doing here, where I'm cutting two pieces, where I'm doing two pieces and at once on a, on, a, on the same piece of uh, wood. Um, some people might just you know choose to do it uh, um, with uh, just one piece at a time on a piece of wood. I happen to like it that way because I can I can hold the piece and um, down below and, and keep my hand well away from my from my knife. But anyway, let me um, let me cut these apart and uh, I'll show you the final results. Okay, here we are. Pieces are all done and cleaned up and cut out. And um, I hope uh, you found the video useful. We've done uh, the uh, rook and the bishop in this video. In the prior video, we did our little pawn and um, and the knight. So we're building up our chess set. If uh, people are still interested in me continuing um, with the uh, queen and the king, and we'll have a pretty much a, a, a full set. Uh, let me know. Uh, leave a comment in the down below, and um, if you're interested in seeing that, we'll work on a uh, doing the king and the in the queen in an upcoming video. Also, keep in mind for for new and old subscribers, we're going to have the uh, the North Bay Forge knife giveaway. I ordered a couple knives, so they're medium carving knife. It's similar to this one here. Um, not exact. This is a modified version of one of their knives, but um, it's going to be their medium carving knife. And what I'm doing is for anyone who is a, a subscriber, both new and and existing subscriber and finds these videos useful when the knives arrive when the knives uh, arrive we're going to talk about um, um, you know giving them giving one of them away to uh, to a subscriber so uh, keep that in mind that should be coming up very shortly and uh, anyway there you go hope you uh, found these videos uh, useful we've got a couple more pieces on our on our chessboard have a good day